guys, this is Mr. Millings, and in this video, we are going to learn about something called the mole in Avogadro's number. No, we're not talking about this furry little animal that lives underneath the ground. Instead, we are talking about a unit of measurement that is specific to chemistry and that is named after this gentleman right here by the name of Amadeo Avogadro. So in this video, we're going to learn about the mole in Avogadro's number, and hopefully at the conclusion of this video, you will understand the concept of the mole Avogadro's number and how these two things relate to the masses of different objects. So let's jump right in and start talking about the mole. So what is a mole and how does it work? Well, a mole is a, a unit of measurement that we use in chemistry. In fact, in a first year chemistry course, you're going to be talking a lot about a mole. So what is a mole? Well, it says right here that a mole is equal to 602 hexillion or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is that you're talking about okay so for example if we're if we're talking about a dozen right if we talk about a dozen if I say that I have a dozen donuts then that means I have 12 donuts the word dozen has meaning if I have a dozen eggs it has it means that I have 12 eggs if I have a dozen students in class that means that I have 12 students in class the word dozen has meaning it means 12 let's take a look at the beverage industry if I go to 7-eleven and pick up a case of soda I will have a uh, a case that contains 24 cans or 24 bottles of soda in the beverage industry the uh, the word case means 24 of, uh, of whatever soda that you're talking about, whether it's Mountain Dew or Dr. Pepper or Coca-Cola. One case of soda is going to come with 24 cans of soda. If we take a look in the office supply world, one ream of paper is going to come with how many sheets? Well, a ream means 500. If you have a ream of paper, you are going to have 500 sheets of, mean, uh, 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 of paper. Okay, so these words ream, these words like case and dozen, they have meaning, right? Ream is 500, case is 24, and dozen is 12, or whatever it is that you're talking about. Well, in chemistry, the word mole, or the unit mole, is equal to 602 hexillion, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is you're talking about. And this number right here is known as Avogadro's number, named after Amadeo Avogadro, an Italian scientist that lived between 1776 and 1856. It is not Amadeo Avogadro who discovered the, this relationship between the amount of atoms and mass of, uh, of the, that particular atom. However, we just give it that name to, to just kind of commemorate his contributions to science. So what exactly is a mole? Well, it says right here that the mole is defined as the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of a sample of carbon-12. All right, so if you have 12 grams of carbon-12, which is one type of isotope of carbon, uh, you will have exactly one mole of carbon-12. And in that one mole of carbon-12, there will be 602 hexillion atoms, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, of this carbon-12 right here. Okay, so basically the entire periodic table is based off of the carbon-12 isotope. And the concept of the mole, once again, it's the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of this isotope of carbon-12. So let's take a look right here. The mole is a crazy huge number. So we have 602 hexillion. To put that into perspective, if we had a mole of dollar bills, you would be the richest person on the planet by far you would have 602 hexillion dollars and if you spent your mole of dollars at a rate of 1 billion dollars a second it would take you 19 million years before you went broke that's how big this number is in fact 602 hexillion is larger than the total number of grains of sand on every single beach on this planet so let's take a look further at just how big a mole is how big is a mole? Just how big is a mole? Well, check this out, people. If it rained one mole of marbles, it would cover the entire earth to a depth of about 50 miles. Check it out right here. How big is a mole? Well, one mole of paper stacked high towards the sky would go to the moon and back 80 billion times. Okay, so that is how big this number is. So why do we use this number exactly? Well, we use this unit of measurement, this crazy huge unit of measurement called the mole, to, to quantify 
uh, or to measure very, 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 very tiny particles like atoms and molecules. Okay, so atoms and molecules are so small that we can use something like the mole to talk about them, to discuss them, to put them into terms that are more manageable and quantifiable. Okay, so for example, we know that if it rained one mole of marbles, it would cover the entire earth to a depth of 50 miles. We know that one mole of paper stacked high towards the sky would go to the moon and back 80 billion times, but check this out. Here's what's mind blowing and is just a testimony to how small these little atoms and molecules are. If I have one mole of water molecules, it is only gonna fill this graduated cylinder up to 18 milliliters. And we know that the density of water is one, milli, or one gram per milliliter. So if we have 18 milliliters, it will have a mass of 18 grams, okay? Which is a very small quantity, right? One mole of water molecules occupies 18 milliliters of space. Think about that. If you have 602 hexillion water molecules, it's only going to be about a sip's worth of water, okay? And that will have a mass of about 18 grams. That is because things like water molecules and atoms are super duper tiny. All right, so now let's take a look at the relationship between moles, the number of particles, and mass, and how you can use the periodic table to uh, tie that all together. Okay, so what is the relationship between moles, the number of particles in that substance, and mass? Well, here's how it works, people. Let's suppose I have one mole of gold. I have one mole of gold. Well, if I have one mole of gold, that means I'm going to have 602 hexillion atoms, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. And if I put these many atoms on a scale, it will have a mass of 196.967 grams like we can see right here. Once again, if I have one mole of gold, it's gonna contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold, and that many atoms of gold are gonna have a mass of 196.967 grams. If I put this onto a scale right here, it would have a mass of 196.967 grams if this right here represented one mole of gold. So that's an important concept to understand. And if you take a look at a periodic table of elements, that number that is typically underneath the element symbol, that average atomic mass right here, that is the molar mass of this given atom, right? What this means is that if you have one mole of gold, you will have this many atoms of gold. You will have Avogadro's numbers worth of gold atoms and that many gold atoms will have a mass of 196.9667 grams if we take a look over here if i have one mole of copper there will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in that one mole of copper and check this out that one mole of copper is going to have a mass of 63.4 or 546 grams so if i put all these copper pennies here on this scale if this right here represented one mole of copper then it would have a mass of 63.546 grams and it would contain this many atoms right here, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so if we take a look at silver, if I have one mole of silver, it's gonna contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And if you look on your periodic table on silver right here, this is the molar mass of silver. What this means is that for every one mole of silver, it's going to contain this many atoms of silver, and that many atoms of silver are going to have 107, have a mass of 107.868 grams. If I threw these silver coins on this scale right here, if this represented one mole of silver, then you guessed it, it would have a mass of 107.868 grams. So that's going to be the relationship between moles, the number of particles that are in that substance, and mass and so you can take a look at a periodic table for all the different elements and see exactly how much the masses of those is going to be based on one mole i think if you look at uh at hydrogen on your periodic table uh its molar mass is 1.001 that means if you have one mole of hydrogen 
you're going to have this many hydrogen atoms, and that many hydrogen atoms will have a mass of about 1.001 grams. All right, so that is moles. That is Avogadro's number, and that's the relationship between moles, number of particles, and mass. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments in the comments section down below, and I really hope you guys found this helpful.